Now we'll move on to discuss the special senses of the body, beginning with vision, including the structure of the eye, the accessory structures, and the visual pathways. The anatomy of the eye. The anatomy of the eye is depicted in this image, and it's made up of the following key structures. The cornea, which is a transparent part of the eye that covers the iris and pupil. It reflects light and helps to focus the eye. The iris. This is the colored portion of the eye. This muscular structure constricts and dilates the pupil. The pupil is the sphere in the center of the iris through which light enters the eye. Within the eye is the retina, macula, and the optic nerve or disc. At the posterior portion of the eye is the optic nerve. This transmits the visual information. The sclera and cornea of the eye. The outermost layer is known as the fibrous tunic, and this is made up of the cornea and the sclera. The sclera covers the majority of the eye surface and makes up the white of the eye. The extraocular muscles that move and position the eye during vision insert onto the sclera. Blood vessels and small nerves enter the deeper structures of the eye through the sclera. The cornea of the eye is continuous with the sclera, and it's made up of a dense matrix made up of multiple layers of collagen fibers. The cornea and the lens refract the incoming light and provide most of the optical power of the eye. The physical functions of the eye. The human eye detects light and transmit nerve impulses along the optic nerve to the visual area of the brain. The eye itself detects light within the visible spectrum. This is between the wavelengths of 400 nanometers to 750 nanometers. The light excites the retina at the back of the eye, and the retina contains the photoreceptor cells that convert the light into nerve impulses. Located deep in the posterior portion of the eye is the retina. The retina of the human eye converts light into chemical energy. It's made up of a number of layers of cells that give rise to the optic nerve. In the center of the macula is the fovea, and this is the most sensitive region of the eye to incoming light. The fovea has a high concentration of cone cells which function best in bright light. The fovea provides us with sharp, central vision, and our eyes move so the target we're looking at is focused to the fovea. The histology of the retina. As you can see in this cross-section, the outermost region is the pigmented part of the retina. This is attached to rods and cones, which synapse on bipolar cells and eventually ganglion cells. The retina is made up of a number of layers. It contains photoreceptors, rods and cones. At the deepest layer, the axons form the optic nerve, which exits the eye and delivers impulses to the brain. The photoreceptive layer. This contains the rods and cones and photopigments such as rhodopsin. This layer absorbs the incoming light and stimulates the bipolar cells and the retinal ganglion cells. The other two layers of the retina are the outer nuclear layer and the ganglion layer. The outer nuclear layer contains the synapses between the photoreceptor cells and the retinal neurons. The retinal ganglion cells, which are the output cells of the retina, are also contained in this layer. The retinal ganglion layer contains the retinal ganglion cell bodies. These cells project their axons towards the brain as the optic nerve. The following is a clinical note of a condition of the eyes known as nystagmus. Nystagmus is a condition that involves involuntary eye movements, such as looking away smoothly and then a series of jerky eye movements back. The movements in this condition involve saccadic eye movements driven from the colliculus. Nystagmus is caused by damage to the brainstem or the inner ear. Clinicians test for this by asking a patient to keep their head stationary and follow a moving object such as a pen in front of the patient's face. In order for our eyes to function, they must process the incoming light. 
The following is the path of light through the retina. First, light is absorbed by rhodopsin, and this triggers a signal that's amplified within the rod cells. The sodium channels in the rods, after stimulation, facilitate an influx of sodium, which depolarizes the rod cell. Next, the bipolar cells synapse with and activate the retinal ganglion neurons through synaptic potentials. Within the retina, signal processing takes place, which generates a cell's receptive field. The retinal ganglion generate and send an action potential along their axons towards the brain. There are two types of photoreceptors in the retina, rods and cones. Rod cells are approximately 100 times more sensitive to a single light photon than are cones. The fovea spot on the retina has the largest concentration of cone cells in the eye. The outer segment of a rod cell contains many more rhodopsin molecules than cone cells. In general, there are more rods than cones in the retina, and this facilitates vision in dim light conditions. Multiple rod cells converge on a single interneuron, and this arrangement amplifies the signals, but the system loses some image resolution. Rod cells are narrow and have only one type of light-sensitive pigment, reducing their function in color vision. Rod cells synapse with bipolar cells. The other type of photoreceptors in the retina are cones. These are less sensitive to light as compared to rods, but they're involved in color vision. There are three types of cone cells, each with a different light-sensitive pigment. Cone cells are lower in numbers as compared to rods, and the loss of cone function in the eye causes legal blindness, whereas the loss of rod function leads to night blindness. The shape of cone cells is different than rod cells. Cone cells are somewhat shorter. The trichromatic theory of color vision. This theory states that color vision in humans is possible because of three different groups of photoreceptors in the retina. There are three types of cones whose pigments have increased absorption for either blue, green, or red light. This theory is based on the premise that any color is a mixture of blue, green, and red. To support the eye, there are a number of accessory structures in the visual system. The lacrimal gland, the upper and lower eyelids, eyelashes, and the nasal lacrimal duct. The accessory structures such as the eyelid. These are moved across the surface of the eye when we blink to lubricate and protect the eye. The conjunctiva. This is epithelial covering on the outer surface of the eye which functions to keep the eye moist and clean. The lacrimal gland. This produces and distributes the tears that bathe the conjunctiva. Within the watery, alkaline tear secretion is a lysozyme that protects against microorganisms. The nasolacrimal duct. This drains the lacrimal fluid from the eye, and this canal is made up of the lacrimal bone and the maxilla bone. The pathways of vision. The visual information from the temporal visual fields is projected from the retinal ganglion neurons through the optic nerve to the brain. Some of this visual information crosses over to the opposite side of the brain in the optic chiasma. Some remains on the same side. The visual fields themselves are divided as follows. A visual target seen by both eyes is imaged by the nasal region of the retina in the left eye and the temporal region of the retina in the right eye. The opposite is also true, which means both eyes share part of the same image. This is depicted in this inferior view on the right side of the slide. This depicts the eyes, the visual fields, the optic nerves which come together at the optic chiasma. This gives rise to the optic tract which then delivers the information to the lateral geniculate nucleus and eventually through projection fibers to the occipital lobe of the brain. After the optic chiasm, the majority of the axons of the optic tract project to and terminate in the lateral geniculate nucleus. Alternatively, some of the optic tract projects to the colliculus, 
which then directs eye movements towards visual targets. The lateral geniculate nucleus is part of the thalamus and it's the primary processing center for visual information. Visual information is then relayed to the visual cortex in the occipital lobe of the brain. The following are some examples of diseases and conditions that affect the eyes and visual system. Number one, conjunctivitis. This is also known as pink eye, and it's caused by damage or irritation of the conjunctiva of the eye. Bacteria, viruses, and fungal infections can cause this temporary eye condition. Number two is a more serious eye condition known as glaucoma. This involves an increase in the intraocular pressure within the eye, and this increase in intraocular pressure can lead to nerve fiber distortion and changes in vision. Number three is retinal detachment, and this is considered a medical emergency. In this disorder of the eye, the retina detaches from the underlying supportive tissue. The symptoms include flashes of light, a sudden increase in the number of floaters in the eye, and shadow formation in the visual field. This requires surgery to fix and seal the breaks in the retina attachment. 